Hello. Good morning. Gorgeous, sunshiny, but cold morning. Yeah, I. Anybody else cold this morning? I actually put my slippers on last night. Like, what in the world? Weren't we just sweating? It's messed up. But anyway, stand with me. We'll pray and we'll get started. Lord, thank you for this gorgeous day. Thank you that you give us the privilege, um, the honor to come before you, to stand in your presence together. Lord, help us to focus our hearts and minds in worship and praise and adoration. You deserve every minute that we can give and more. Lord, I pray that this morning's time, this gathering, Lord, it would honor you and please you and bless you. And, Lord, that we would all have a deeper sense of your love, that you want to rest with us and show us just how deep that love goes, that even in the times we're running from you, you're calling our name to get our attention to remind us how much you love us. Lord, I pray that everyone, whether they're watching online or they're in the room, hits the pause button on life and embraces the moment with you. Lord, we ask your blessing over this service and we pray that you, you're blessed with it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's sing nice and loud. Oh yeah, and also, we just turned the heat on. I don't know if that's praiseworthy. Is that Terry? Huh. All right. Oh, I left it on. Cool. All right. Everybody ready to worship the Lord this morning? All right. How about you guys at home? Okay. Good. All right. <laughs>
nothing say it. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, Your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name they shall be done. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name they shall be done. Oh, amen. You believe that? Well, let's let them know today. Come on. Let's let them know by our worship and our praise as we sing to Him. We exalt Him. Whoa. Got it. 
got a feeling the darkness won't last very long. I've got a feeling the darkness won't last very long. Let a sleeping world awaken. There's a new day on the rise, and the atmosphere is shaking as the graveyard springs to life. you Lord we give ourselves to you today in worship and adoration to your name because you're worthy of all our praises we humble ourselves before you and we praise your name whatever we've come to church with we give it to you and we give ourselves to you we lift our hearts to you our souls everything within us we thank you for your goodness Thank you for your blessings, your steadfast love. We thank you for everything, Lord. If the altar's where you meet us, take me there, take me there. If you need is just an offering, I'm right here. All my life is here and I'll be a living. Sacrifice for you. You're a fire, the refiner. I want to be consumed. I want to be tried by fire. Purify. You take whatever you desire. Lord, here's my life. Come on, tell them now. I want to be. is 
desire Lord here's my life If your glory wants to come here Let it fall We want it all Your fire is consuming Fill this place Set it ablaze And I'll be a I want to be consumed, I want to be tried by fire, purify, you take whatever you, you desire, Lord here's my life, I want to be tried by fire, purified, you take whatever you So clean my hands, purify my heart, I want to burn for you, only for you. Take my life as a sacrifice, I want to burn for you. our life today Lord we take whatever you desire out of us and we worship you because it's all about you you created us to worship you so we worship you today because you're worthy of all our praises you do whatever you want to do in us as we humble ourselves to you you're worthy Lord whatever we came to church with whatever things are going on this week we come to you and to the cross. You gave it all for us. We give it all back to you. And we lay it at the cross, thanking you and worshiping you. You created us for this. You created us to worship you. Because when I look into your loneliness, when I gaze into your lovely, When all things that surround become shadows in the light of you. When I find the joy of reaching your heart. When my will becomes enthralled in your When all things that surround 
become shadows in the light of you. I worship you. I worship you. Tell the Lord now, tell him now. When I look into your holiness, when I gaze into your loveliness, when all things that surround become shadows in the When I found the joy, when I found the joy of reaching your heart, when my will becomes enthralled in your love, when all things that surround become shadows in the light. I just want to bring an exhortation that is from the Lord. It's really a, a reminder and, and a reset, if you want to think about it like that. I spent some time yesterday reading through Revelation because, let's be honest, there's a lot of wild things going on in our world and it's easy to get caught up in wondering is this it is this the end times is this the the mark of the beast is this all this other stuff and I'm sure every one of you has had that moment where you're thinking this might be it maybe this is what that's about and so I read through a few chapters and this morning God brought something to my mind. And this is what he wants you to walk away with. This is the reset. In the midst of all that's going on in the book of Revelation, and there's a lot of detail, a lot of stuff. But every time the saints, the Christians, the believers, every time they're mentioned, they're praising and worshiping God. They're not confused. They're not fearful. They're not wondering, well, what does this mean? What's this part? What's going on with this? It's happening around them, but they are focused on God. They're focused on the King of Kings. 
and some of our Christian ease, our language that we use in here every week, every time we meet, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, that's taken directly out of the book of Revelation. And their eyes are on him. And in the story, when he comes riding from the clouds, they're already ready. Their eyes are on him. It's not a surprise. It's not, uh, it doesn't catch them unaware. They were watching and they saw him because their hearts and their minds were already in worship. And so church, there is a lot of stuff. And I do not know what it all means. But what I do know is that when we fix our eyes on the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, when we are worshiping him, that's the priority. That's what he wants from us. And this song says it so beautifully that when all the shadows are, are around me, still I will worship you. That's the priority, church. It's not to get into the book of Revelation and understand everything that's in there. It's good to know what's going on, but that's not the priority. The priority is the King of Kings. And I want to invite you to mentally and in your heart take a reset right now. That, Lord, I am laying aside all of the stuff that I, I'm confused about. And it's not just politically. It's not just what's happening in our world. I'm talking in your family. I'm talking with your job. I'm talking about your finances. I'm talking about the feud with the neighbor. All of that stuff that we come to him today and we lay that down and we choose to reset our priorities. That we choose to remember that I exist to worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, that that would be what we're focused on, that that would be the cry of our heart, that we start there. And so as Pastor Bobby leads us in this song again, would you take that moment with the Holy Spirit and reset, reset your priorities, verbalize to him through the song or just with your words, Jesus, I am looking to you. I am putting my eyes on you the King of Kings. I'm going to spend my days focused on you and not all the other stuff. That is the choice I'm making. That is my commitment today to reset my focus. You know, that's really a word because when I was choosing songs for today, I didn't want to do this song. <laughs> Because it's an oldies, 80s song. Some of you know that. And because uh, you've been around. Don't look at me pious. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But what she just said and the word the Lord gave her was exactly what God was convicting me of. He was saying, no, I, I, want, to help, I want you to help people to worship me. Keep their eyes on me. In the midst of everything going on, they keep their eyes on me. Amen? That's exactly the word the Lord gave me and he just gave to her. When I look into your holy name, when I gaze into your lovely name, when all things that surround become shadows in the light, When I found the joy of reaching your heart When my will becomes enthroned in your love When all things that surround become shadows in the light of you I worship
Sing it one more time, sing it. I worship you. today. That's why we gather in your name to worship you. Hallelujah. King of kings and Lord of lords, you're worthy of all our praises. We worship you today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. If you came to worship the Lord and you were blessed by that, by worshiping him, turn to someone next to you and say, I came to worship him today. How about you? I, did anybody else have a cassette or a CD of that song, that song on it? John, shh, you're too young. Man, I used to wear that cassette out with that song. <laughs> and I just, it was like, all I remember is the story of, you know, Jesus when he sits at the table and the woman who's been forgiven of much comes in and she's like weeping using her hair to wipe his feet. And I just would always have that picture in my mind when I sang that song. And it was like, repeat, repeat, repeat. <laughs> anyway. Whew. Thank you, God, for orchestrating that this morning. Okay. i get a hold of myself. We'll switch gears. And my lovely wife is going to take over. Didn't you have to rewind it every time? Yeah. For those of you that don't know, when you have a cassette, you would have to rewind it to listen to it. Um, I mostly listen to CDs. I was a little bit younger than him. But anyways, um, we just wanted to apologize uh, for apparently we missed Pastor Appreciation Sunday last week. Um, but thank you, everybody, for the card. It was awesome. Um, but one thing that we would like to do for our assisting pastors and... Um, is to take a time just to pray for them. Um, so if you guys wouldn't mind helping us, um, Terry Elger, I'm going to have you come over to Pastor Rita and some of the seasoned sisters, if you wouldn't mind heading back towards Pastor Tony. And uh, Brenda and Kathy, can you go to Pastor Jen? And then um, some of our teenagers, what I would like you guys to do is divide and conquer um, if some of you will go to Pastor John and Jesse, and then some of you come up to Pastor Bobby and Vicki, and then everybody else, just find somebody to pray over, all right? Oh, Pastor Cherry. Sorry, buddy. Um, pa um, I already had this laid out. Marty and Linda, if you could go over to Pastor Cherry. And then everybody else, just go to one of the pastors, if you don't mind, surround them. Go where you feel led. Yep. And what I would like you guys to do is just uh, just pray over them. Um, words of encouragement, um, you can do this. <laughs> um, just take a few minutes to just pray over them and wait for God to maybe speak through you to them. 
All right. Okay, go ahead. If you're watching at home, you can join in by faith. Lord, we just thank you for the gift of having so many pastors in our congregation. And Lord, I know that without them, our job would be much more difficult. And Lord, I just pray that as the months go on, and even though um, October is coming to a close, Lord, that these leaders would feel your presence, Lord. They would know that they are loved. And Lord, that they would know that they are important. And we just thank you and praise you for our pastors, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give them a big hand clap, like a cheer. Woohoo! Yeah, make sure the Kleenex boxes are out. Everybody's getting sappy today. Seriously, staff members, shoes. Now I'm gonna get choked up. <laughs> Please know that we are so grateful for you guys. That we get the honor and privilege to serve beside you and to call you friends and family. We love you guys and truly appreciate you. John, please don't cry. I'm not crying, you're crying. Thank you very much to our men who came out to help with the yard and the grounds. A special thank you to Pastor Jen. She not only helped with the planning and putting everything together, but she was right out there with us. So thank you, Pastor Jen.
a big thank you for our chili makers. We had fantastic chili from Terry, Linda, and Pastor Sonny. Um, we would ask you to take a look and see if you notice any differences. And if you see anything else that needs to be done, please let us know so that we can have you sign up to help us next time. Um, a reminder that we will have a joint service with Victory Church next week. And we will also have our guest speakers, Jason and Nikki Albello. They will be joining us. Where, where are they from, actually? Where, where, from Oregon? So they've, they've done a lot. And I'm very, very excited to hear what they have to say. So don't miss out on that. Um, men, now that we did our work, we get to have some fun. So November 13th, um, I need you guys to sign up. We are going axe throwing. So axe throwing and a meal, it'll be $30 a person. Please let me know um, as soon as you can because I've got to make the reservation and I've got to make sure that we have enough spaces for our men and enough food so we don't go hungry. All right? Uh, Season Sisters, 1230, Friday, Connie Vincent's house. Got it? Got it. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity to give back. I pray, Lord, that you would bless our offering and that you would direct it where it needs to go. We trust you in this, and we give willfully and happily. In Jesus' name, amen. So at the end of service, you can drop it off, or you can do it online, or you can mail it, however you want. Pastor? I was ready to go home. Anybody else? All right. Um, actually, John, stay up here for a minute. I need one other guy. Pass those out, would you please? Somebody else, uh, Nathan or Bobby. Or Luke. Thank you, sir. Yeah, pass those out. I don't think I have enough. One for everybody, but maybe one for per family for now. Oh, you know what? I forgot to keep one. I'm waiting to see if how many we got. So I posted this on the Facebook page, I don't know, a couple of days ago because I found it from uh, Pete uh, Scazzaro uh, posted it and uh, Emotionally Healthy Spirituality and all those courses and whatever. Um, <clears throat> it goes along with this idea the last couple of weeks of um, my two-parter on running on empty, uh, talking about Sabbath and resting in him. And uh, I just thought it was super powerful, this little reminder sheet. So I don't know, post it on your mirror, on your dashboard of your car, or on the windshield while you're driving. I don't know. It's, okay, that's probably not a good idea. Well, your, your car, John, drives for itself, right? So you could get away with it. It's got one of those fancy space cars. but Yeah, so anyway, I just thought it was interesting about this idea of uh, tying resting in his presence and Sabbath together with some of these points on here, if you want to read with me. I know I am relaxing. I like that word better than resting sometimes, right? Relaxing in Jesus when I am. Enjoying communion with Jesus, even in the midst of disappointments and storms. Where have we heard that this morning? <laughs> Experiencing a lack of anxiety in my body. Not doing for others what they can and should do for themselves. Oof, ouch. Maintaining my rhythms of being with Jesus in seasons of great pressure. I'm guilty of that. I'm actually guilty of all these, but, you, you know. Less and less triggered by things going awry. <laughs> this is kind of hard to read, isn't it? Anybody else reading this with a little bit of, ooh, God, I need some help. Present, 
present to the beauty and wonder of those around me, like enjoying the moment, right? Enjoying a deep sense of knowing I have nothing to gain and nothing to lose. I want only God's will. Experiencing deep contentment and caring for the people God has entrusted to me. Receiving God's gift of limits rather than fighting, ignoring, or denying them. Ah, ouch. Discerning and embracing the season in which God has placed me. Some good little perspective points, aren't they? If we're spending some significant moments of Sabbath rest, or rest in him, on a regular basis, I get a sense that these will probably be easier. <laughs> Anybody else agree with me on that one? Okay. So this morning, um, whew, I mean, the word Jesse gave, the songs Bobby picked, and your exhortation in the middle of that, Bobby, it's like the Holy Spirit knows what he's doing or something. So I was going to do um, Running on Empty Part 3 because I'm super clever. <clears throat> Not really. <laughs> and in the, in the middle of waiting till the last minute, it was like Friday, I was in here going to do sermon prep because I had a busy week. I'm in a panic because usually by Friday, I'm pretty much cemented in what I'm going to do for a sermon. I'm sitting at my desk and I'm just like, ah, what do I do? Okay. Read through the last couple weeks, maybe do a greatest hits sermon, we'll wrap up. That's easy. <laughs> and so I was going to do that. I was going to do the running on empty part three, and, and it was like the, I was just this, like, oh, it doesn't feel right. Uh, maybe I'm on the wrong track here. Oh, no. What if we do testimony Sunday? Because I don't have anything yet. And so I'm in this, like, full on, like, okay, God. I go, maybe I should have been talking to you sooner in the week, but I'm kind of desperate right now. <laughs> and he's like, of course, chuckling and realizing, like, I'm been waiting all week to orchestrate this moment. And so I'm like, all right, take a deep breath. You got this. Maybe some worship will help me refocus and get calm. So I put on, um, anybody listen to that CD, House Fires, there's like a worship kind of group called House Fires. So I put on that worship CD, and I'm like distracted, can't focus until I get to this one song, and we're going to play it at the end of me speaking this morning. And it just like, pow, got me. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I hear this from God. I've been waiting for a moment like this to tell you that I love you. And so initially I'm like, that's nice, God. I still need a sermon. <laughs> I've been waiting for you all week for a moment to tell you that I love you. Awesome. So how about that sermon? <laughs> I've been waiting all week for the moment to tell you that I love you. And just like that, I broke. I mean, like, good thing nobody else was in here because they would probably be worried about me. I mean, I'm wailing. I mean, I'm crying so hard from the weight of knowing that he's just been dying all week to tell me loves me, and I've been too boneheaded to stop and listen for his voice, despite preaching on it for the previous couple of weeks. So I'm embracing this song. It's really starting to hit me, and it's just that you're going to hear the lyric in the end. It's just your love. It's much like the song you picked out this morning. No matter what, it's your love that grabs a hold of me, and I want to worship you. So I have this powerful time of not even, I wouldn't even call it like me exerting effort in worship. It was more like he's pouring out so much love 
on my heart and my mind in that moment on Friday that I couldn't even contain it. Anybody ever have a, like one of those God moments where you're so overwhelmed by the fact that he loves you? It's like you can't even breathe. That was me on Friday. And I'm sitting at the desk and I'm like, okay, God, I get, you got my attention. And I just spent a good hour and a half, two hours uh, with that song on repeat, <laughs> just being loved. And then immediately as I'm, of course, he realizes my limits of wailing and crying and carrying on. As I come out of it, I remember Jen and I had this conversation earlier in the week about this scene in the first episode of the first season of The Chosen when he calls Mary Magdalene and he calls her by her real name and it's just, I'm going to show you the video in a minute, but it's like, whoa. And for whatever reason, he puts Isaiah 43 in my head. And I'm like, okay, what's Isaiah 43? So I'm reading through it, and he talks about how he had Isaiah prophesy over his people, Israel, and all those, the Jewish folks. And he says, I've called you by name. Let's read it. Isaiah 43, 1 through 4. He's reminding Israel who the only Savior is, and that's him. So, of course, as many times throughout history, God's people meander and wander and doubt that God really cares for them, and he sends Isaiah to then prophesy and preach and convince them, wait a minute, Who's the only God that loves you? And in Isaiah 43, it reads, verse 1, But now, thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, which means all God's people, he who formed you, O Israel, meaning the whole nation of God, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. And yes, that is possessive. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. And when you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. And the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give, I give Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba in exchange for you because you are precious. You are precious in my eyes and honored. I love you. So he gives me that scripture and of course then I weep for another half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> being loved on by God. And <clears throat> all of a sudden I realize what I'm speaking on this day. <laughs> that we all need to hear this message more often. That we are so valued. <laughs> he sends prophets and preachers and people to pierce through our reality with the, that message. That you are loved. You are precious in his eyes. He calls you by name. And listen, if you're like me, there's a million times in your life that you can say, am I really worth that? Yes. Of course. Yes, even you. loved there's no human on the earth that's ever been on it that he didn't love doesn't want to love he does love each and every one of us in ways we can't even imagine he's just waiting to get our attention so that he can speak that convince us of it 
show us. It's everything. Kathy, play that video. This is the scene in The Chosen where Jesus calls Mary Magdalene. Mary. Mary of Magdala. says the Lord who created you and he who formed you. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. trying to be dramatic on purpose. I want us to close our eyes and enjoy a moment with him right now. This scene, this scripture, the moment I had on Friday was an inspiring moment for me. But he wants to have that with each and every one of you. There's not a single person in this room or watching online that he hasn't parted heaven and earth to get you that message that he loves you. And right now, he wants you to embrace it. To have enough whatever to hit the pause button in your own heart and mind and say, okay, God, show me. Oftentimes, this following Jesus thing can get so repetitive that we fail to stop and remember how much effort he has put into this idea of loving us, calling us by name, and making us his. Five million reasons to doubt it <laughs> or discount it. He's asking you right now to set all that aside and say, okay, God, I yield. Much like he orchestrated that moment for me this week, he's asking you to do the same.
just embrace how much he loves us. Everything will be different. Lord, I pray for each and every person here and joining us online, God, that this message that you've orchestrated this morning through worship and a couple of exhortations and now this message that you love us would be a deeply impactful moment in time for each of us. changed by your love. Forgive us, Lord, for all the things that distract us from listening to you, resting in your presence, seizing a moment with you. Lord, empower us to embrace more, moment, embrace more moments with you today and in the coming days. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures for encouragement for you, and then we're going to finish up with that video. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 3. Verses 14 through 21. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. See a theme yet? That according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. In verse 20, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. That's a pretty cool scripture, huh? And then Romans 8, starting in verse 18. 18 through 39. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy, comparing with the glory that is revealed to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation that was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope, that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Verse 26, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. 
For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. There's a dynamic Paul's speaking of here about life in the spirit. The moment that we just shared together, even if you weren't prepared for it, is something that God wants to set up for us every single day of our life. To embrace a moment in the Holy Spirit where even in the midst of being like, whoa, what's going on? He'll get our attention and then empower us to draw closer to him. to blanket us with a sense of love and purpose and value and identity in him that will leave us changed and transformed. And it goes beyond feel-good worship songs and religious rituals. It's this idea we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks of seeking him as our source of life. And listen, there will not be all perfect days. There will always be days where we're like, oh yeah, I forgot to spend time with God. But what if we stacked more days where we actually embraced those moments? More days together. Like, actually want to. The thing I had to repent for on Friday is that Even though my job is to pastor, there are so many days that I don't seek him like that. And yet I'm still allowed to stand here. I'm hoping that (laughs) we all learn to seek him more. Especially me. I need to know his love. To really cement in my heart and squeeze all the other junk out and know that I'm his son, that he loves me, called me by name and I'm his. Right? That we all embrace those moments on a more regular basis. Verse 31 in Romans 8. And I've read this scripture so many times. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn. Paul's speaking to a church that were being put to death and tortured on a regular basis. And not only that, on the flip side, they were being persecuted by the religious factions as well. Condemned because they were Jesus' followers and departed the Jewish faith. Think about yourself in that context. You're getting it from all sides. And now think about Paul's statement. Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? It is as it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. Verse 37, no, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him 
who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. His love is all that matters. His love is all that matters. His love is all that matters. Kathy, if you get that video ready. I want us to end with this song. Just keep embracing the moment of being loved by him as we close with this song. You want to stand? You want to dance in the aisle? We don't have any flags, but if you want to grab a ficus tree and whip that around, go for it. Uh, whatever God is convincing you of as a way to show him that you're embracing his love, then do that. You don't have to be emotional like me. Just own it. Pull it in here.
there's no expectation that you have to be emotionally undone <laughs> in this moment like I am. But I do want you to feel a sense that the Holy Spirit is trying to draw us in. Into a posture of resting in his presence. To be able to open our hearts, our minds, our ears. To hear him say, I love you. I've called you by name. You're mine. Just so happens your senior pastor is a sap, so that's why I cry a lot. <laughs> he loves you. I can get up every Sunday and just say those words over and over, and that's all he wants you to hear is that he loves you. You're his. He knows that everything that you're, that's going through your mind, your heart, good, bad, or indifferent. But he wants you to know that he's with you always. Even if you're trying to escape it, you can't. His love is still going to be there. And he's hoping that you'll stop and open yourself up to be loved. Let him pull the stuff out that gets in the way, the doubt, the sin, whatever it is, so you can hear his voice. Lord, I pray over all of us that we get this. create a drive in us to seek you, to worship you, to just sit in your presence and hear your words, I love you. Lord, help us to carve things out of our daily life that keep us from embracing a moment of hearing you say, I love you. today and every day. And Lord, there are a myriad of needs represented in this room and online. God, be the answer to all of those. I pray a supernatural blessing on everyone. In Jesus' name. no easy way to shift without a clutch, but we're going to transition. <laughs> Pastor Tony, if you'll come up. Kathy, if you want to bring that slideshow up, we're going to do a celebration of life for Carol Hemian. Thank you for coming to take part in it. Oh, cords are in your way. <laughs> She's four wheeling now. Boy, that was profound, soaking in the Lord's love.
And it was a beautiful prelude to what we're about to do. It's with a mixture of sadness and joy today that we celebrate the love of Carol Hemian, a wonderful sister in the Lord who is now dancing on the streets of gold, a life well lived and filled with love. Let's begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, we're here at this moment to celebrate the life of Carol Hemian. We celebrate her life of love and integrity and grace, a life that had you at its center, and a life that leads a legacy to those left behind. May this day be a celebration for a life that touched so many people. We ask you to bless this time today, Father, and we give thanks to you for the life of love that Carol had and that we all have in you. Amen. I've known Carol for about 35 years, but these last few weeks I've learned things about Carol that I didn't know, and it gives me joy to share them with you. Her life has inspired me, and I want to be like her when I grow up. <laughs> Carol was a very laid back person, never had much to say, and um, she, but she was always faithful, attending services with the last few years coming with her walker whenever she could. She always sat with June and Dylan. But there was a whole side of Carol that not too many people knew. But more about that later. But first I want to introduce you to her. Carol Cavola Hemian was born on April 23, 1948 in Brockton. She moved to Whitman as a child, attended Whitman schools, and graduated from Whitman Hanson Regional High School. For most of her life, she was alone raising her two daughters, Terry Pace and Kim Sainsbury. She had five grandchildren, Megan, Rachel, Michael, Ben, and Jacob. She had two sisters, Dorothy Griffin, who resides in New Hampshire, and Arlene Deslorius, who is with her now in heaven. She had several nieces and nephews, one of whom is with us today. Her daughters couldn't be with us today, but they'll be watching on um, YouTube. Isn't it nice that they could be, be here on YouTube? Carol worked as a nursing assistant until she became disabled in her 30s, and then she was never able to work again. Through the years, she had many physical problems and major surgeries, but I never heard her once complain about them. She had been attending the Brockton Eastern Four Square Church since its inception 40 years ago. She, attended, she and her girls attended the first service in a little shack in Easton. Uh, that shack isn't there anymore. It's on the site of the uh, Easton Children's, uh, Children's Museum. But she, she told me the story of uh, sitting in that building, and it was in December, so they had a little potbelly stove or some kind of thing, and the, the room was so small that she had to sit too close to the heater and it melted her nylons. <laughs> <laughs> Through the years, Carol served in several behind-the-scenes ministries, especially with her girls in the church nursery. In fact, Mia, was one of their nursery babies. <laughs> in 
Carol was a die-hard Patriots fan. She loved Tom Brady. In fact, she named her beloved tuxedo cat, Brady, after him. And just as an aside, Brady and my cat, Gracie, were brother and sister. They were from the same litter. I kind of felt related to Carol in a way. <laughs> Uh, when I, but when I would tell her about how honorary my Gracie could be, Carol would not volunteer any info that, um, would, that would be talking about Brady. So I thought Gracie was the red-headed stepchild of the litter. But her daughter Kim has Brady now, and she tells me that she's just, he's just like Gracie. It must have been that litter, Kim said. <laughs> Carol was an avid reader. She especially loved to read the Bible. But she also liked reading fiction novels and books about the end times. Kim said they found lots of books about the end times when they were cleaning her apartment. She always had some kind of a book going. Her main interest in life were her children and her grandchildren, and she liked keeping up with her family and friends on Facebook. And oh, how she loved her Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> now I want to tell you about Carol the missionary. I believe it was St. Francis of Assisi who said, Preach the gospel and sometimes use your words. Carol did that. She preached the gospel by kindness and loving actions. She found a way to have a huge impact for the Lord in her own environment. She spread the love of Jesus to every resident in the Bel Air high rise where she lived. On her own, many years back, Carol found a way to help those who needed it, a very simple way. Every week, she would go to the post office and to the bank and get stamps and quarters for the laundry and sit at a little desk in the main hallway and sell them to those residents who were not able to get out to get them. It started as an act of kindness that reached every resident. Everyone in the building walked by her desk, and she had a smile and a kind word for each person. This developed into a ministry of then delivering mail and packages to the restaurant, to the residents, as uh, the mail would be left in the hallway by her desk. So there she would go with her walker and wearing her Santa hat or her elf hat or whatever hat and knocking on everyone's door delivering their mail. She knew everyone and everyone knew her. Incidentally, that building had nine floors. Carol sent 256 Christmas cards every year one to every resident in the high rise. Myriads of people said how much that meant to them. Remember, these were elderly people, some who had no families. But Carol found a way to shed God's love abroad to them. As a tribute and a remembrance to Carol and the huge number of high rise residents who became family to her. Uh, the week that she passed, Kim and Terry wrote out 256 Christmas cards and delivered them to each resident, carrying out Carol's legacy a little early, but one last time. That had a big impact on everyone there. 
Then Terry and Kim decided to host a Dunkin' Donuts coffee hour in Carol's memory, to which all the residents were invited. They, they didn't want a traditional memorial service, but this was the kind of memorial service they wanted as a tribute to their mother. They were praying that the Holy Spirit would give them the words to glorify Jesus as people remembered Carol, the Carol they loved and who loved them with Jesus' arms and heart. It was a very last minute thought and they really had no plan or no program. They just wanted to bless the people. But instead, the people ended up blessing them. It was the residents who made this little gathering a church service. They were the ones who wanted to pray before they ate. Then it started. Kim and Terry said that person after person came to them and told them how much their mother meant to, her, to them. Carol Hemian, this quiet little laid back lady, found a way to touch people especially those who had no one else. She bore the image of Jesus to them. Terry and Kim heard story after story of how people were loved by Carol, from the lady with the bottle of booze under her arm to the young drug addicts who lived there and everyone else. She showed God's love to them. She was kind and loving to all. One lady came to the girls and told them this. Her son fell off the ninth floor balcony. It was a Sunday morning and Carol was waiting outside for June to pick her up for church. No one else was around. Carol saw the boy, called 911, and stayed with him until the ambulance came. Although the boy passed, this mother was so grateful that he was not alone and that Carol stayed with him until the paramedics came. I remember that Sunday and how shaken up she was when she came to church. The stories continued but some wonderful, lasting tributes to Carol came during this gathering. One lady said she wanted to continue the Stamps and Quarters ministry and do it exactly as Carol did to honor her. Another lady said she wanted to continue the writing and delivering of Christmas cards to each resident in her memory. Another lady said to everyone, we need to stop bickering and to get along together. Life is short and we need to be kinder and more loving toward each other. Carol's influence? I think so. The manager in the office of the high rise gave Kim and Terry a bouquet of flowers. The management said that Carol made such a powerful impact on the residents that they want to engrave a plaque in her memory and place it on the wall in the main hallway of the building. They've never done that for anyone else. In that hallway in the building, they have flags of every nation from where from which the residents living there came. If I'm not mistaken, I think she said that there were 14 flags from 14 different nations. Carol had a huge impact on each person living in that building. Her kindness and word and action touched people from many nations. Without even leaving her building, Carol reached the world. This was her mission field, and I'm blown away when I think about that. 
Knowing Carol, I think she would be embarrassed to hear all these wonderful words about her. She was just being Carol, carrying the image of Jesus. Just like Pastor Troy said in a sermon several weeks ago. I know the words, I know the words that she would not be embarrassed to hear as Jesus embraced her in her home going, well done my good and faithful servant, Carol Hemian. Carol was a very generous, loving person. She wasn't famous, wasn't rich, wasn't powerful in the world's eyes, as the world would call powerful. But Carol Hemian has finally come to her own, her eternal reward, rich with glory forevermore. And in honor of Carol today, we will be having coffee and refreshments in the foyer. But before we leave, let's pray. And then we will conclude by singing one of Carol's favorite songs, Amazing Grace. Let's pray. O oh Lord of comfort and compassion, the family and friends of Carol Hemian remember her with gratitude for her life now that she has journeyed from this world and is now with you. Although it's hard to say goodbye to Carol, please bind up the hearts of all who love her with your love and your healing power and walk with her family as they continue on with their lives in the days to come. Help us to walk in the legacy that Carol has left us. And may we all find assurance in the fact that you are always with us and you love us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <laughs>
for such great love. We thank you for Carol's life and the love she exempted. May we continue that same love as you've wrapped her and now bring her into your presence. May we continue to walk in your presence and in that love as we leave her today and we fellowship. We thank you for it and thank you for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you guys.